So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, piecewise functions uh, and hopefully provide a little bit of an explanation uh, on the uh, y equals absolute value of x parent function as well. Now, uh, so often uh, everybody describes that that parent function as the v, uh, which is perfectly uh, correct, um, but not a whole lot of people generally have a, a good understanding as to why it's a v. Um, so let's take a closer look at what the actual definition of an absolute value function is. Now, uh, this has been presented in, in most algebra books that you've had, even in high school, uh, but it's very often overlooked. Um, the definition of an absolute value function is x when x is big or equal 0 and negative x when x is less than 0. Um, and this is actually a piecewise function. We all know that, that we think of an absolute value, it spits out a positive number, uh, and it, it definitely does. Uh, if x's are positive and you plug it in, then you're going to get a positive number. If x's are negative and you plug it in right here, for example, if x is negative 2, you would get still a positive number. So. An absolute value has a domain from negative infinity to positive infinity, but its range, the output, will always be positive. And that's what this definition allows for. So let me go back here and erase some of that. Now, in graphing this, um, it's just taking two separate graphs and putting them, to get them together as one. Uh, so when we look at these two separate graphs, the first part would be y equals x. Well, y equals x is just the diagonal line through the point 0, 0 with a positive 1 for a slope. But now, we don't want all of this. We only want this graph when x is bigger equal 0. So I would then need to come back and erase this part right here. Okay? Now, as for the other graph, we would have y equals negative x. So similarly, my negatively sloped line would cut through like this. But again, I don't want the whole thing. I just want where x is less than 0. So now I need to come back and erase this part. And what you have left there, that's your v. That, that's why the absolute value function appears to have that, that very abrupt change uh, at the origin, uh, is the fact that it's, it's actually two separate linear graphs put together uh, to create the absolute value. So now we'll take a look at uh, a different example, um, one that has three different pieces to it. Um, and it's no different. We'll just go uh, step by step through this. Now, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and start with just a big xy plane. And as I put these together, uh, I'm not really going to pay much attention to the restrictions. I'm not going to pay much attention to those just yet. Uh, instead, I'm just going to get the graphs of y equals 4, y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, and y equals negative x all on the plane. So y equals 4 uh, would be this guy right here where that's at 4. Um, the y equals negative x, uh, that's going to be this thing, similar to what I just drew in the last example. So that's taken care of. And then finally we have this graph right here. Uh, and that might be one that, that some people haven't uh, seen, uh, or if they have, it's been a while. Um, so let me go through and, and remind you uh, what that graph is and where it came from. Uh, this is not one of our parent functions uh, with transformations. Uh, this is actually um, something different. So if I look down here, by squaring both sides, I get y squared equals 4 minus x squared. And then x squared plus y squared equals 4. So this graph right here is actually a circle centered at 0, 0 with radius 2. Now, what happened was when we squared both sides, um, which, which happens a lot, uh, we create an extraneous part of the graph, uh, something that doesn't actually exist. Um, so if we come back up here and we look at the uh, original that I had drawn, 
see if I can make this look a little neater. Um, you can see from your knowledge of domains and ranges that our y value right here has to always be positive because that's an even root. So down to the, the graph of what this is, it's actually just the top half of the circle. So I'll come over here uh, and I'll put the top half of the circle in where that would be a negative two, that would be a two, and that would also be a two. Okay, now um, you can see that, that I've got kind of a big mess going on here. Um, and and the, one of the reasons why I didn't want to erase um, parts and, and I didn't want to pay attention to the restrictions just yet is because I want to emphasize something that, that's often overlooked. Um, some of these graphs can look pretty unique, uh, but you have to remember that when you give your final answer, no matter what, this has to be a function, which means that our graph has to pass the vertical line test, and clearly that doesn't. Um, so, coming back now to the restrictions, for that y equals 4, we only want this graph when x is less than or equal to negative 2. So, when x is less than or equal to negative 2 means I need to erase all of this over here, uh, all the way until negative 2 and then I also need to be clear and make that a filled in circle because of the or equal to part okay now <clears throat> for the semicircle um, the semicircle would only need to exist between negative 2 and 0 so between negative 2 and 0 would mean that I need to erase all of this and the negative two, the negative two would have an open circle there, uh, where at the zero we'd have to put in the filled in circle. Um, so again, the 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 strictly less than uh, would be the open circle, and the bigger or equal uh, would be the filled in circle. And then finally, uh, we've got the the negative x, but we only want that when x is bigger than zero so I need to erase all of this here oops I need to go back and fill that in so all of that's got to go let me fill that back in real quick that I accidentally erased and strictly less than means we have an open circle uh, at the zero uh, and which shows you uh, what the final graph would look like um, and you can see it would pass the vertical line test as crazy as it might appear um, it is the actual graph of what we started with. Now, one of the other things that's worth having a, a conversation about is the domain and the range um, of this, uh, this function, um, which again, is still a function, it just looks a little different. Um, the domain, if you guys remember, that's the left and the right, uh, the, the x values that generate y values. So it appears, if you look at all of the x values, even though we jump around on what appears to be from time to time, we really don't jump over any x values. Um, this would make sure that we went to negative infinity to the left. Um, even at negative two though, it maps to a, a value, so it's part of our domain. Um, and then we would continue all the way over here to, to zero, and then pick back up from zero on because of this guy right there. So our domain would actually be negative to positive infinity. Now the range on the other hand, that one's a little more tricky. Um, you can clearly see because of the zero or because of the arrow here, we would start at negative infinity and then we would come up uh, to zero and we'd actually stop. Um, th this is not a value uh, on the function in terms of, of the, the, the range. Uh, so we'd have to stop there. Um, but we would pick back up and go from 0 to 2, inclusive of the 2, and then we would stop again, and we would just include the single element of 4, uh, that 4 right there, uh, because of the horizontal line. So from negative infinity all the way up, negative infinity all the way up to 0, then we stop, then from 0 up to 2, then we stop, then just the four, uh, because it's a horizontal line. 
Um, so again, it looks a little strange, uh, but it is no different than what we've done in the past. Uh, and we've got our domain range and we've got our function.